Hi there! Some of you might remember this PCB circuit that I glued onto this LiPo battery. If not, then make sure to watch my video about my DIY Charge Protect 5V Boost circuit. Like the name of the video already implies, this circuit can charge up a LiPo battery, protect it from things like an overcharge, over discharge, or a short circuit, and it can boost the voltage of the battery up to 5V which makes it the perfect companion to power your portable 5V electronics projects. I think this circuit is super handy to have around. And many of my viewers thought so as well. And a surprising amount of them also asked for a kit version of such a circuit. So I might be 3 years too late, but here it is. An improved version of my Charge Protect Boost circuit, which was created in cooperation with Elector and is now called LiPo Supercharger. Some key improvements in comparison to the old circuits are a USB Type-C input jack, an eFuse IC for even more protection, and a switch to change between 5V or 12V as an output voltage. And in this video I will show you how we came up with this design, how to assemble it, and finally I will thoroughly test out all of its features. And if you're interested, you can of course learn more about this kit and buy it by following the link in the video description. With that being said, let's get started. First off, let me tell you that the old circuit does work just fine for most applications. But there were some slight problems that we fixed with the new version. And those were the following. If you look closely, you can see that the components of the old circuit were super tiny SMD ones. Which certainly can be sorted by hand, but it is not a simple task. That is why for the new circuit, you not only get a PCB with already soldered on ICs, which are the hardest to solder, but the SMD components are also quite a bit bigger, and thus the soldering process is much easier. Next, the micro USB input of the old circuit is pretty outdated nowadays, with USB Type-C stepping in as a replacement. That is why we switched to this USB Type. But do not worry, you do not have to hand solder the dozens of USB port pins by yourself. Instead, you get such a lovely breakout board, that you simply have to add to the main PCB. Next, the old circuit had the problem that while it could prevent a short circuit, it could not prevent an overload. That means if you draw an output current of beyond 1.1 amps, the output voltage breaks down more and more and becomes pretty much unusable. And the boost converter IC also becomes pretty hot while doing this. We fixed that in the new circuits with the inclusion of an E-fuse, which only allows a specific output current to flow, but more about this maximum current limit later. Then there was also the problem with the PCB design of the old circuits, meaning it was definitely not perfect since I'm not a PCB designer. That means there were probably feedback and ground paths which were too long, misplaced capacitors and whatnot. The new PCB design however is much better, because a proper design engineer from Elector made it. And I can say that it looks rather promising. By the way, the Gerber files for this project, along with the schematic and even the BOM files, are open for everyone to download and see, in case you want to learn in detail about this project. But anyway, we also used a new protection IC for the battery since this one comes with an integrated MOSFET. Then we also incorporated a new charge IC and boost converter IC, which are this time both from Texas Instruments. Not only do they both come with more features, but by doing so we not only increased the charging current to 1 amp, but we also achieved an improved maximum output current of 1.5 amps at 5V and 0.75 amps at 12V before the e-fuse gets activated. 
And yes, 12 volts as an output voltage is also a new addition to this circuit. We even added an LED to the outputs to inform you if 12 volts is selected or 5 volts. And those were basically the main changes. And if you're now wondering how we selected all the values for the complementary passive components, then let me tell you that we, for the most part, simply followed the recommendations given by the IC manufacturer's datasheets. We pretty much only had to do a more or less complex calculation for the inductor value. And with that being said, let's finally open up our kit box, which in my case is sadly empty. I of course got a pre-release version months ago. And while the packaging might look a bit different from what you will receive, we can do the assembly together. So I screwed on my fine soldering tip, heated up the iron and secured the PCB to my desk with electrical tape. I basically started with the flat SMD parts, like resistors, capacitors and LEDs, and then moved on to the big components, like the inductor or the bigger capacitor which both can in fact get easily soldered in place by hand. And while using a microscope is certainly helpful, it is definitely not a requirement for assembling this kit. But anyway, at the end I soldered on the USB Type-C port and the switches. And do not worry, the kit will also come with a small manual on how to do this soldering process. And if you're still confused after reading it, you can always watch my video on how to solder SMD components. Now after around 1 hour of soldering, my LiPo supercharger was complete. And thus it was time to add my LiPo battery to its battery terminals. After then connecting the board to a 5V power supply, we can see that the power good LED lit up as well as the charging LED which means the battery was charging with a constant current of just below 1 amp. After around 2 hours, the charging process stopped at a current flow of around 50 mA and a battery voltage of 4.19 volts. Perfect! Next, it was time to test the 5V and 12V outputs, which both worked flawlessly by delivering 5.04V and 12.09V respectively. That means we can obviously power 5V and 12V electronics projects with it. But just to be a bit more professional, I instead hooked up a constant load to the outputs as well as my lab bench power supply to the inputs instead of the battery. Then I slowly cranked up the output current of the circuits while writing down how much input current slash power it drew from my supply. After doing this procedure up to the current limit of the circuit, I decreased the input voltage a bit to simulate the dropping voltage of a LiPo battery and repeated this test. Of course, I did this also with another input voltage level. And afterwards, I did the same measurements with the 12V output as well. I did all of this just to fill in this lovely spreadsheet which shows us that the average efficiency of the converter is around 70 to 80 percent and the maximum output power is around 5 to 6 watts. Next, I also let the battery deplete completely in order to see whether the over discharge protection would kick in, which it of course did at around 2.5 volts. Last but not least was the short circuit test which this time did not cut off the battery power, but instead it only limited the current flow, which is also acceptable. And with those tests out of the way, it is safe to say for me that this new and improved version of my charge protect boost circuit is a success. And I hope that everyone who will get one will be happy with it. Also, let me know what other projects of mine you would like to see as a kit. I hope you enjoyed this project and learned a bit about electronics along the way. If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!